Thank you for joining us today for the virtual Sunday service with the Center for Creative Living. CCL, a charter of the Universal Church of the Master, has served and supported the spiritual needs of its community here in the Bay Area for over 20 years. Good morning and happy Easter. Yay, happy Easter. Easter. Lovely group of people all excited about what are we going to do for Easter? Well, welcome. Uh, first, you're going to start out your day with lots of excitement and energy, I'm sure. And did, hopefully, everybody became part of our mariachi band this morning. Put your eggs. Let's hear your eggs. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. See? This way, you can make noise and you can make music wherever you go. And you can spill candy on the floor. Uh, thank you, President. That's what I get. You're welcome. That's what I get to shake it. <laughs> this the, this, this uh, demonstration of what's inside your egg is uh, by our president of the Universal Church of the Master, Reverend Corey Gough. Thank you, Corey. And we so enjoyed Thank you so much for being here. We got it. Here, here we go. That's more people coming in. Here. Lights here. Lights here. And and Sherry, why don't you stand standing? Because how many birthdays do we have coming up this oh, next we week? We forgot the I've got them. Oh, oh hey, come on up, Sherry, and get your beads. Yay! <laughs> My mom's birthday is, it was April 20th. And what's your favorite color? Uh, I think I'll do green. Okay, you're going to match me today. There you Thank go. You. Happy birthday, baby. <laughs> Yay, happy birthday, Sherry. For those of you who don't know, this is a woman I've known for over 50 years, so uh, <laughs> I better remember her birthday. <laughs> okay. Now, anybody else have a birthday this week or had one last week? My mom's birthday. Your mom is in, like in, in Thursday. Your mom's oh, in spirit. Yes, what was her favorite color? Her favorite color was purple. Well, I've got blue. Can you imagine? Clothes. She loves royal blue as well. Yeah, it's beautiful. beautiful. Good. Good. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Please know that when it's your birthday, do something special. I am all for that. Uh, a celebration. Celebrating who you are is the most important thing that you can do, okay? And for, if this is your first time here at the Center for Creative Living, we are a multi-faith church. And what that means is, if you haven't noticed, we had somebody speak about Ramadan. We had somebody uh, talk about uh, a, a goddess energy. We've had somebody who's going to be speaking about Passover next week, and today we're going to speak about Easter because we believe that no matter whatever religion you are, you're a child of the Creator. You're a child of God. And so, whatever, it's just like each ri river of a religion you follow is flowing to where you need to go. So you don't have to decide right now what religion am I. Just know right here, you're in the house of the Creator, and we're so glad to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us. For any of you, if you're interested, there's coffee in the back. You can grab a cup of coffee. There are restrooms upstairs, up the veranda, up the stairs, if you're new to the building. Hey, B, we've got a red place right down here in front, so I can I can tease you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, babe. <laughs> and um, so, welcome, welcome. And Chris, well, take a program and an egg. Did you get an egg? Oh, oh, uh, April. There are eggs there, and so if you could hand out eggs and program to people come in. Anybody else need? A, uh, didn't get an egg? This is symbolic. This is symbolic of the religions that we are celebrating today. This is the beginning. Whatever your beginning was, we all started out like an egg. And here you are. This one happens to have candy inside, which is kind of nice. And a sweet touch for Easter. So many things are happening in the world that are causing you to be in despair, frustrated, angry, hurt, 
scared. Every time you feel one of those emotions, please just take a minute to drop your energy down and get grounded into Mother Earth and ask Creator to come be a part of who you <coughs> truly are, which is a child of God. Because only through you taking that time to get centered and to calm down does the universe start calming down. As I mentioned last year, just like each drop of rain, if every drop decided, I'm not going to do much and didn't rain, we would never have rain. Each one of you are that drop of energy, of quietude, of calm, and of peace that can help change the world just by being you, by smiling, by looking at people with your, with your beautiful eyes, and radiate love. That's how the world changes, is one person at a time. It's not they, it's us. And each one of us is a part of that us. So what I'm talking about today is you going through the day saying, I make a difference, I'm important, and I am that A that I have right now that keeps humanity growing in a positive way. This is an egg that's full of sweet stuff, just like I know all of you are. Okay. Um, next week we're going to have our wonderful associate pastor, Annie, is going to be uh, talking about Passover because she was raised Jewish. We have how many of you in here were raised Catholic, for instance? I, uh, how many of you were raised a, a Protestant religion of some kind? Yeah, and how many of you were something different? You were Jewish, or you were something completely different. Each one of you is a child of God. And you could have been raised in an atheistic family. That's okay. You're welcome here. Whoever you are, whatever, whatever gender you are, whatever sexual energy you are, whoever you are, you are still a child of the universe. So I want you to be know that you're always welcome. And thank you, Chris, for leading exercises this morning. I saw you and Rebecca back there, and that's so exciting. I, I had one of these days where I just sat. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> and, uh, but I'm so glad to have all of you here. Now, the, the very first thing we're going to do is a meditation with our wonderful <laughs> Dr. Reverend Dr. Janet Childs. And uh, Janet is this amazing force that we are always so excited to have. She was gone for a week and we missed her so terribly. Oh, yeah. We missed you. Yeah, that was. And so, how was the poetry in San Antonio? The poetry was fantastic and we're excited to bring it back to you in all kinds of ways. And in fact, my friends, What's coming up is our HIV rejuvenation retreat, so yep. be sure and join us. It's on Zoom again, and I will give Corky the wonderful flyer. Good, Yay. good. This Friday. This Friday. Everyone is welcome. I think you can take off your mask. I think I can take off the mask. <laughs> yes. Uh, we're going to hear boom, 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 boom. So I'd like you all to put your feet flat on the floor. Close your eyes. Take a nice deep breath. I want you to visualize a field of flowers. And just like our planet, this field is filled with every kind of flower imaginable. And as you slowly start walking through this field of flowers, you brush up against a daisy, you might touch a petunia or a pansy. You can feel the vibrancy of each flower. Because flowers not only are beautiful to look at, they're delightful with an aroma, their fragrances. And some people here today, since this is a metaphysical church, some people can even hear flowers. So if you are a person that can hear a rose or an orchid, put your place in meditation where you can see, smell, hear the flowers. 
and realize each flower you look at is an individual with everything important to it. Everything is so important to it because it knows it's beautiful. And so just keep your eyes closed. Keep breathing deeply. And allow the music to flow through our wonderful Dr. Chad. And just calm down. Beautiful and great. 
cross we are the Lord oh yes we are the love feel that love as the promise forever in your heart microphone sound for so many months and he needs a break yes and uh Corky is taking over and she said she'd love somebody to help her so if you know anything about audiovisual and anything about anything uh, that has to do with that she, she, you're, you're a candidate she, she made you <laughs> and so talk and uh, talk afterwards uh, about you don't have to know anything about tech it's as simple as knowing how to run a screw and let the arm come down and collapse that. So there's just a thing where she's, until she gets all her operations, she's a little limited. So it's just a matter of plugging a couple of cables together. We'll even provide a private training session for you. Woo! Uh, uh, training with a good looking man. That can't be bad. Uh, just, uh, thank you, Ed. <laughs> really do appreciate that because it has been so much. And just a lot of work putting this together in a new place, and we really do appreciate um, it. Yes. Uh, Catherine shop design. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, oh, no, that's the wrong. Okay. I was just telling, uh, we've got like Richard Jerusalem, and we've got uh, Chin Lee and, and uh, Glenn, Glenn, and mm -hmm. Catherine Shop, and Laura Overman, and Marguerite Kim of Prana, and Richard Jerusalem. Okay. So, good morning. Good morning to all of you people. Is, is that called Zoom Land? Zoom Land. Yeah. Zoom Land. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for joining us in Zoom Land. We really, really do appreciate it. Oh, and Lynn, and Lynn Rogers. Yeah. Oh, and Liberace? Yeah, Lynn Rogers. Lynn Rogers. <laughs> Lynn Rogers. <laughs> Lynn Rogers. <laughs> I was going, wow, that's Lynn Rogers. Rogers. Well, Chandler. Yeah. 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 <laughs> sounds great. We, we appreciate having, having mm. evil from in spirit joining us also, so thank you so very much. Um, I don't know how many of you can remember being a child and hunting Easter eggs. Mm. Wasn't that just the most enjoyable thing? I loved it. Yeah, it was fun, and it was something that you never knew what was going to be happening or what was going on. And uh, for those of you who raised a different, different faith, you, you missed out. So what I'd like you to do is go home and hide your own and find it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Have fun. Hey, after two days, I'm going to forget. <laughs> yeah, exactly. After two days, you forget where you put it, and then you go, oh, there's an Easter egg. Oh, that's right. My, uh, uh, my son and uh, his girlfriend are up, and uh, they went to visit his, his daughter and uh, the grandkids. So my granddaughter and my great-grandchildren are celebrating Easter this morning, and I just talked to them, and they said, it's just crazy. You know, the kids are eating the candy and they're getting wired. And she said, we're taking a buddy to the beach. <laughs> Good idea. But it's still that excitement and that enthusiasm. And so many times we forget, why are we doing this? And it's because this is the basis of the Christian faith, is the resurrection of Jesus. And so what's going to happen is our wonderful Reverend Mary Gary but who comes to us from her charter, which is CIG, the Center for Infinite Growth, 
like I have a charter center for creative living. And so our parent church, the Universal Church of the Master, has many charters. And we all have the same belief that everybody is welcome. Everybody is a part of the Universal Church of the Master. And so when she comes more from a Christian side, which I love, because I can call on her and say, kind of like, and what would Jesus say, Mary? <laughs> and she said, <laughs> And she says, me, well, Donnie, what does the Baha'i faith say? What does, you know, somebody else. So we have this, so many different people that are bringing in the energy, like I'm, I'm my wonderful uh, uh, Reverend April, and she w works with the goddess. Mm -hmm. And we have people who are wicked, and we have people that work with all different religions here. So if you have questions, and you want to talk about somebody else's idea of what they believe in, do. Most people are really willing to share mm -hmm. the, their belief with you. And that's how we learn. That's how we grow. And so we're ready. Are you ready this morning for, for some growth? Please welcome. Beautiful flowers, and please oh. check out all these little bunnies that are running around here, yes. and this gorgeous uh, uh, pink angel and the crucifix. There's so much here on the altar today, and we'd like for you to join us, okay? Now, what's happening, don't let this disturb you, but a bunch of food is coming in that has been donated by Trader Joe's to the Center for Creative Living. So, uh, after break, please take food home with you because Gabrielle doesn't have any place to save it here. And it will not go to waste because she has people who need food. But this food is for us to choose and take some home with you today, okay? And now, Reverend Mary, why don't you come up? Yeah. Yay. 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 Oh my God, I cannot tell you how my heart is cold looking out at all these people. Yeah. I prayed you would come. <laughs> I know that sounds pathetic, no. but uh, no, no, no. I, I do so much better when I connect with the people in the room. Uh, it just changes. Uh, just changes who I am. How far in do I have to go? Way over here. Just, uh, uh, the, the, look at see, see, what's happening. You. Can you see me? Can you hear it's, you? You. it's hearing you that we need to make sure. Oh, hearing you. you. you These people can hear me, good. but people at home can't hear me. As I said, nobody, money very often has said, <laughs> Mary, we can't hear you. <laughs> Several people have said, Mary, could you stop talking? Or Mary, could you talk in a softer voice? But they don't usually say, Mary, we can't hear you. So God bless you at home for, uh, for getting up and connecting in with us. It just, uh, it just, ah, oh, my heart is so happy. I didn't know. And uh, some people I haven't seen in a very long time, and it's wonderful to see you. Okay, before we, you begin. See where the hand is on the four? Yeah. When it gets to the ten, you you should be gone. Sit down. <laughs> Sit down, Mary. Sit They're down. already warning me. They've done with me before. <laughs> they know what to expect. Um, I I uh, I just can't. Janet's voice. I thought. I don't know about the rest of you, but I thought it was unusually powerful this morning. Yeah. 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 Just, oh, oh, it just yeah. moved my heart. Yeah. Oh. So, so I'd be some kind of a foolish speaker not to have her come right up here with me, Janet. Yay. And Yay. Let's, um, you know, there was a time oh when God. I used to say um, a song. I used to walk, we used to walk among you and, and, and connect your energy to ours. I think you can still do it. Oh, they're not going to yell at me. They're not. They won't yell at you. I won't let them. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't want to pull my mask on either. You're going to get us in trouble. We'll do it from up here. It'll work. Trust me. I, I trust okay. you. But, uh, I, Ed, can they move a little bit? But uh, See, I can't no, move. Like, I can't move my if you can't hear yourself through the speaker, <laughs> that's all it means. Right. All right. Okay, so yeah, go ahead and move. I don't know what to do. Yeah, on the, would you tell me my Just do. Uh, we'll we'll just stay be, right. I, I just we'll stay right. Okay. So that was a little song 
that some of you may remember. You can always sing with us. Please remember. Yes. Because one of the things I realized that that if you stirred your stumps, if you got up at the early hour that that somebody like Patty and and uh, Joyce. Joanne had to Joyce. do. Joyce. 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 I'm sorry, Joyce. Yeah. Joyce Brown. I know you, Joyce Brown. I've known you. For years. <laughs> We realized who you are and how we are. So we say, you start. How can anyone ever tell you you are anything less than beautiful? How could anyone ever tell you you are less than whole? How could anyone That your loving is a miracle. How deeply you're connected to my soul. Don't they look at somebody and sing it to them? Everybody, look at somebody and sing with them. Just pick out somebody and look at it and sing, okay? Here we go. How can anyone ever tell you you are anything less than beautiful? How could anyone ever tell you you are less than whole? How could anyone fail to notice? That your loving is a miracle. How deeply you're connected to my soul. I want you to feel that. I want you to feel that power of connection. And I want, you know, when I was in high school, <laughs> when I graduated from high school, little bitty high school, uh, I won the drama award. No. And I've been, I know. <laughs> and I've been dramaing ever since. And I love to give talks. It's, you know, and this talk, I ripped up five times. I never do that. And my grandchildren, I said, I need you to listen to the talk. And they said, it's too long. What are you trying to do to these people? I said, you don't even come to our church. What do you mean? But they were right. So I ripped it up again, and I'm going to share it with you today. And, and what I'm sharing is not just Easter, but springtime. And before there's springtime, there has to be hope. Hope, I believe, is intrinsic to the human experience. If we didn't have hope, think of the horrible things that have and are happening in the world. And if your very being didn't internalize the power of hope, how would you get up? How did you take a deep breath or, or eat whatever you could find in a Holocaust prison or do all the terrible things that people have had to survive if hope wasn't intrinsic to you? And I believe it is. So I, I looked for somebody who believed with me to help the talk. And so I'm reading Reader's Digest. How's that for a good spirit? Hey, I love it. Reader's Digest. That's what it kept. Obviously, never mind. <laughs> I'm sorry, God. Uh, I was <laughs> more, less drama, more spirit, Manny. Um, <laughs> many of you know uh, or have heard of uh, Jane Goodall. Yes. 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 She wrote a book about uh, reasons for hope, and there was a summary of it in the Reader's Digest. And would have I expected it to find that there? No, I didn't. So I said, Jane, who is in her 90s now and has moved to New York City. First, she lived her skitty wumpus years in the jungle, right? Right. Connected to uh, the gorillas. 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 Who? I thought they were. Burrows? No. no. <laughs> Burrows. 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 I thought they were uh, chimpanzees, but whoever they were, she was connected. A lot easier than being in New York City, I would think, at 90. But, you know, <laughs> she gets to make her own choice. So she's writing this reason for hope. Reason for hope. 
And she says she believes there are four reasons that mean hope was something that the God force put inside us. Mm -hmm. That was um, the human intellect. Mm. You think, well, you know, there are people smarter than me, maybe, but there aren't any gorillas smarter than you or any other animal because we have the ability to encounter a part a, a problem whether it's what to do with dinner or whether it's a, a solve the world problem to encounter that problem that we haven't heard about before and our mind allows us to begin to think of solutions mm -hmm. that's a gift that no one but human beings have animals are loving animals support each other animals live in community but they don't have that opportunity to solve a new problem an intellectual problem it's in our nature we can do that the other thing is that the resilience of nature mm. you know we're a little tough on nature we human beings <laughs> we don't probably take the best care of her as we might and so we have to say what what will work what will work and she has a wonderful story about 9-11. Um, now you have to do some tall searching to have a good story about 9-11, don't you? I yeah. mean, most of the people in this room experienced it. Janet went back and poured her loving energy into the, the uh, people who had been doing the work to help them recover, but all of us had some experience with 9-11. Mm -hmm. Most of it wasn't hoop hip hooray. But what they found is a tree that had been terribly burned and massacred but it seemed to have a little life in it and they were clearing things away and um, they're going to throw the tree away they would thrown lots of trees away and and some woman she didn't know her name so you don't know her name because i don't know her name <laughs> um came and said please please try and save this tree just please try and save this tree so she they did they gave it to a nursery which was known for bringing uh, things back and this beat up tiny twisted piece of trunk regrew and it became so beautiful that they moved it back to the memorial for uh, the 9-11 mm -hmm. it's huge now and has big leaves and one of the things that Jane does is she takes children because her third uh, element is that children have power there's power in the in the um, uh, young people yeah. so she takes them to the 9-11 place and she was with them there and kind of telling them stories and she saw them all looking up and she saw some of them with tears coming down their face and at the very top of this tree that was as close to dead as you can get and come back in the middle of the leaves was a little bird nest oh and little sparrow-like birds were feeding their young at that tree at that moment when those people were there. Wow. wow. And that's the reason for hope in and of itself. And she says the truth is the human spirit is indomitable. The, everybody, you don't do it, you don't have to do it right now, but in your heart of hearts, you've had a moment where you thought, I don't know if I can. You know, this is really more than I can. We buried our, our children, and I said at the time, oh, but you know, you just tie your shoes, brush your teeth, and keep going. That's our nature as human beings, and God bless us all for it. But God helped us. And one of the things that God did to help us was spring, which I better get to click in here. Um, it comes every year. And the first and most powerful spring thing that spring does is it, it eliminates the darkness. Winter is, you know, we have to have winter. It's part of the cycle. But winter is long and cold and dark. And that's how you know spring comes, even before you knew spring had a word. Because the power of this season brings light into darkness. And it was one of the things that people first began to understand and reach for as they established the earliest people that, that I know about that had organized religions were pagans. And pagans worked with, evolved with, were nurtured by changes in the life around them. And one of the strongest um, 
goddesses of, of the pagan faith was the goddess of spring and if I get this name mispronounced April please fix it for me <laughs> <laughs> she was called Estore is that right? Estore. 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 She was well known <coughs> and well loved and she was the goddess of spring and, and she traveled in a really good crowd you know she had bunnies and eggs <laughs> because fertility Reproduction, making the life, the world grow again, was so important in those days. And that's why we have them on our Easter table. Aside from the fact that C's is the best marketer in the world, <laughs> and so everybody knows about Easter eggs. I chose to add to the table a picture that was painted by a, a Ukrainian artist. Mm -hmm. And they reproduced that picture, put it up on um, a website somewhere where I found it, <laughs> that says, Peace for Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And so I brought it. You know, you're not supposed to be political on the, from the altar, but or from the um, pulpit. But I don't think it's political to want peace for Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And the little eggs that are there are Ukrainian eggs. You want me to lift this? No, 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 the picture. Oh, okay. I have to walk away. No. <laughs> Don't talk. I'll be back. See, isn't it beautiful? Well, Actually, you can, you can pass it around if you want. You want to pass it around? Sure. Hold it. Hold it for a second. So oh, gosh. Got it? Got it? <laughs> okay. Peace for Ukraine. <laughs> it's adjacent to the bunnies that are sitting with a yellow ribbon on a blue cloth and happen to have Ukrainian eggs. Ukrainians are well known mm -hmm. for their wooden eggs mm -hmm. that are painted here. Mary, did you notice what happened to the eggs that you and I chose? Oh! <laughs> oh blue and yellow. Right? <laughs> 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 <Yeah. Yeah. laughs> So they were um, the originating, in my view, the originating religious force that came into the to the uh, Western world. Eastern world is is uh, is wonderful, but different. And um, and the what I call the originating god, the god force, looked at them and said, "Well, they're doing a good job, but there's some things they're missing." So um, the originating god found Abraham and filled Abraham with information and had it be um, a little more devotion to the originating God, a little more understanding of life beyond this life. Most people in this room, is my guess, believe that there's life after, after death. I certainly believe that there's life after death. Anybody who's buried their children believes that there's life after death, usually. Um, but. God taught Abraham a whole new group of things, and Abraham taught his followers, took his followers and moved because they found him to be, um, uh, I would just say, annoyingly righteous. Is that as kind as I can say? <laughs> and so he didn't, he didn't have the best interface with all of the uh, pagans in that area who had known him from before. And so they moved to Jerusalem. And in Jerusalem, there were very wonderful leaders sometimes, and there were less than wonderful leaders sometimes. And at any point, a portion of, and you'll learn much more about it next week when our dear Annie talks about Passover, but um, a large number of Jewish people went to Egypt and ultimately ended up as slaves um, there and were held as slaves for generations. And they, um, God looked with disfavor on um, what was happening to those people and so he sent Moses and I'm sure all of you have seen the movie you know what happened when Moses went to Egypt and um, and so the God uh, brought um, I'm not going to talk about that you talk about that next week okay <laughs> so um, they did leave he, that they were freed they because of the intervention of their God and um, they were not injured in the plagues that were brought to the Egyptians because God passed over them. And uh, our Annie will talk to you more about that next week. One thing that I really wanted you to remember 
I know Dottie, so I have to keep my eye on that clock. Um, <laughs> is that Jesus was a devoted Jew. Jesus was a Jew. And he was glad to be a Jew. He was a Jew. He loved his people. He tried to teach in the temple when he was just a young man. Mm -hmm. He, uh, His family he came from a family of Jews. His disciples, the first people he picked to teach his teachings to, they were all Jews. Jesus was a Jew, and he wasn't looking to establish a new religion. Mm -hmm. He was trying to improve the behavior of some of the people in his religion. Mm -hmm. To give people another way of looking at things because Jesus loved us all you know we could do the Samaritan story but one of the manifestations their world is full of prophets and prophets are good I'm for prophets um, but Jesus was an unusual prophet in that he uh, operated out of his heart more than out of his head there's nothing the matter with our heads. We need our heads. But it's powerful to see someone. I know because I married someone 50 years ago. <laughs> that operates out of his heart. Yeah. Yeah. That that uh, we would have sometimes the darndest people coming to the door. I said, are you going to let them in? He said, of course. <laughs> of course. He lets them in and he held his heart <coughs> open for them. And so did Jesus, who was his teacher. Um, well, that took me off, of course. Uh, <laughs> but we know that things didn't work out for Jesus um, at a Passover time in Jerusalem. And that he was crucified, and I, I brought that. First he prayed. That's the picture that I found in, in an old um, building in North Carolina. We were in North Carolina for a few years taking care of our daughter. And I found that picture, and it, it kind of moved me. And that's Jesus praying at, um, in the garden before his crucifixion. He knew he was going to die. But well, we all know we're going to die, but he knew he was going to die tomorrow. <laughs> and so um, he prayed, prayed for strength, prayed, uh, if I don't have to die, God, uh, you, you know, I'm, I'm willing to surrender that, but he did. And he was crucified, and he was laid in the tomb given to him by Joseph of Arimathea. And then his family and his followers went into hiding and they finished Passover. Passover is uh, how many days? Nine? Seven. Seven. Mm -hmm. I have to count. I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Seven day festival. And so it, it had time. And they finished it and the women came to find him at the tomb and to uh, raise the oils around him and um, bless him in the, in the rights of their, of their beliefs. Mm -hmm. And when they got there, what happened? Gone. The door, the tomb was open. The stone had been pushed aside. And what had happened? He was risen. What was he? Risen. What was he? Risen. Risen. Because I believe we will all rise. I believe that's part of our human nature. And when he um, uh, appeared to people, he appeared to the apostles. You know, it was Doubting Thomas who said, you know, come on, put, put your hand in my, uh, when, if I, I can put my hand in his wound, then I'll know it was really Jesus. And so when he, Thomas came into a room and Jesus said, oh, did you wanna, and he said, no, no. I'm sorry, Master. I believe you now. I believe you. And I share with you the things that I pulled out of that piece of gospel that said he didn't eat, couldn't eat our food then. He, um, he didn't want to be touched. You know, that's the, you can't touch. And um, he came through the doors without opening them. Now, if there are people here who have a metaphysical background, and if you were to think about how we interact with and understand about spirits, that is what, you know, we don't have spirits that come to dinner and eat with us. They may come at the table. They may come through the doors, but they don't open them and wait on the other side because they can't access them. And the reason I share that with us 
today is that it is a good thing to remember that metaphysics is an extension of the beliefs of people who understand that there is more to life than what we just see and experience here. There's life somewhere else. I don't know the name of it. You can call it heaven. You can call it anything you want. But there is life beyond life as we're experiencing it together in this room. And I think that that is an important thing to remember. I have a long history, which I'll be glad to point uh, print online, of how Christianity, which was the followers of Jesus Christ, initially were all Jewish people. Because, the, you know, who's teaching them? The Jewish disciples. Where did he come from? He had taught throughout Jerusalem. So they expanded their understanding and beliefs and tried to live a more loving life as well as a powerful intellectual life. Mm -hmm. But as that began to spread, people who were not Jewish began to understand the power of the love of Jesus and how people who believed, really believed in that, were kind to people even that they didn't know. Attributes that we all reach for. People in this room want to be kind to other people. People in this room care about other people. People in this room want peace for Ukraine. Because as you are touched by a growth in understanding, whether it's Jesus or Moses or Abraham or anyone who says to you, try and be more. Try and do the right thing. Try and understand that you are here for a purpose. And that purpose is your personal growth. Not your personal riches. Not your personal beauty. Not your personal greed. Your personal growth. Be a better person. And there's probably so much that we don't understand that is available to us when we cross depending upon how hard we have worked here how much we believe here and not uh, are you a genius so you solved the problem of the world are you a kindness so that if you pass a hungry person on the street and you have leftover from your your uh, <coughs> takeout from your meal you just give it to them I remember one time I did that and told you know and I was, I cannot tell you, he was hung, he was fed, but I was fed. I realized in that moment what a little thing I had done and what a difference it made to somebody else. So I would encourage you to reach for the little things. I, d I did promise some of you that I would tell you how Easter got its name. So I am going to close with that. <laughs> um, an extra two minutes. <laughs> what happened was that the uh, the religion moved from apostle-driven Jewish religion, heart-focused, into Rome. And Rome uh, took over the religion. Mm -hmm. And they said it needs a better structure, so they structured it after the Roman art army. So the Roman Catholic Church has a pope and bishops and da 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 And I'm going quick. And, um, <laughs> and after that, they had an understanding of things that were taught. And so um, they decided, this Council of Nicaea, <coughs> uh, they decided that people weren't going to be smart enough to understand some of the things, so they sent out an edict to all parishes and said, burn the books of Mary Magdalene. Wow. Burn the books of Thomas. They're too complicated for people to understand. Give them Mark, give them Matthew, give them Luke. Give them John. That's it. Now, I think that was short-sighted. And it's taken us how many generations for those books to begin to surface in other places? And B might even tell us about that sometime. But what it means is that there was an early change in Christianity. But they also proselytized. I had to look that up. Proselytized mean we recruit for our team. And so they decided that they were going to recruit from the pagans because the pagans were the largest group of religious group that was around at the time. So they were recruiting from them. 
So they adjusted their main holidays mm -hmm. to match existing holidays of the um, of the pagans. They went to winter solstice. That's a really big holiday, right? <laughs> And then, did you ever wonder, I was a little girl and I wondered where the lambs came from in December. Well, what, the reason you, we celebrated in December, Christmas in December, is because they moved it to that date so they could interface with the um, uh, pagans that were celebrating the winter solstice. And then they moved to the spring solstice. Equinox. And they looked for... Mm -hmm. Say your name? Oh, Sorry, uh, that was an unfair call. Uh, Estory. Oh, Is that right? Astora. 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 They looked for her and they said, oh, everybody loves her. And the people of the Christianity said, we want this um, celebration of the resurrection. It has to be tied to Passover. I mean, that's crazy to have it any other way. They didn't take very many strong stands, but they took this one. And so they took the name a story, a story, a story, and they changed it to Easter. Easter. Wasn't that easy? Aww. And that's where Easter got its name. Tom, tell us how we know what day Easter's going to be. It's the first Sunday after the first full moon after the 21st of March. How about that? <laughs> we had only been married about two weeks when he told me that, and I thought he just made this up. <laughs> <laughs> Dug out this great big book that he came with, and sure enough, that's how it is. So now you know that that's how Easter got its name. Now you know that um, we can grow from it and through it. it. Used to break my heart when I was a child. I used to cry at the Stations of the Cross, but we don't have to do that anymore. We have to be joyful together in Easter. I'm all done. <laughs> Master and keeping you at. Oh, uh, no, I need my taskmaster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Good. Glad to hear that. And uh, now, this is a time that we do uh, an offering, and this is a blessing for the church. And so, uh, Annie, uh, do you want to, have, want to have somebody help you? Uh, B, could you help pass a basket? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and please do a blessing when you put the, your whatever donation is in. Put a blessing, okay? And know that this is the, the support for the for the church, and we're so we're so delighted to have that. And now uh, we have a, a, a wonderful. This is coming here for you to pick out. A, is that a bunny or an egg that you're being passed? It's an egg. It's an egg. egg. Okay, it's we've got more eggs. And, egg. and this is a, a chocolate egg for you. And uh, please uh, uh, take it. And know that... I <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Pop, pop, pop. Oh, 
Yes, you deserve two of them. What the heck? Please, uh, now you wanted to say something, our president. Before you finish your offering? No, you can talk. They're, they are very much uh, used to us talking over the offering. And this is president of the Universal Church of the Master, uh, Reverend Corey Gott. Hi, I just want to take a little brief minute here to thank Dottie and to thank Mary and to thank all the charters that uh, reach out to everybody. So I just want you all to know you don't have to be a UCM member because you're part of CCL. Okay, and we are very grateful as UCM members, you know, to have you open your mind, make the changes you need so that UCM, CCL, CIT can go forward. So thank you for being here. Thank you, Dottie, for the wonderful gift you have and you give to everybody every week. And I'm sorry I can't be here every week because I work. <laughs> so, all right, thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you. you. And for the, would you please pick up your program? And there is a prayer for you to honor the, the what we call honoring the basket. And it's on the back of the program. Sacrament of giving. Yeah, the sacrament of giving. And Annie, would you start yes. us? Giving to the ministry. From which we receive our spiritual support and nurturing. Is an affirmation consciousness of the truth that spirit is the sovereign power in reaching every area of our lives. And so it is. I want to thank you so very much. And uh, as soon as we get through passing out the eggs, uh, and uh, we're going to have a closing prayer. And Annie, are you thinking of a closing prayer? Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, and here's, here's the microphone. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. And Gabrielle, we're going to do the closing prayer right now. Okay. <laughs> 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 uh, I was listening to Mary speak. I'm going, I was watching the clock, and I'm thinking, and I have to take Passover in that another time. <laughs> so we're really, you know, we're going to do a very brief review of Passover, but we're going to talk a little bit more about our inner freedom and what we've actually mm -hmm. found in our lives. Mm -hmm. So I hope to see you, all of you, and more next week. <laughs> <laughs> so let's take a nice note, a moment here and close our eyes. Take a nice deep breath in. Breathing in love, light, resurrected energy, beautiful, loving spring energy. And let's hold on to that love. And then let's release it all with a sigh. Ah. And let everything go. It just is not within that loving light energy right now. Take one more breath in. And breathe out. Ah. Dearest Mother, Father, God, dear Creator, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for our lives. We thank you for helping us to remember how all of these holidays and all of the religious paths actually fall in together as one. Creator, you are constantly reminding us of our oneness, and we are so grateful for that. As we bring about today and we restore, we resurrect, we re-rise, we, 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 we are risen in our beautiful energy and love and gratitude for each and every person in our lives, for our beautiful Mother Earth and every part of her and the sky, all a part of the universal light. Every bit of it, Creator, we are so grateful that you have given us this, this moment of recognition. As Reverend Mary reminded us, it's in the small things, because so many of us are wearing, still wearing masks, Creator, you remind us that we have that light in our eyes, and as we shine our beautiful love through our eyes, we are lifting people up, and it's that upliftment that is the pure essence of our lives and pure the essence of everyone's life. The more that we give from that energy, Creator, we know you remind us, the more we are healing 
and we are healing those around us and we are bringing peace to all the world especially Ukraine at this point in time we know that that love everything that we have carries forward and in deep 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 gratitude we go out and we spread this energy today and every day and we say thank you thank you thank you blessed be Amen, and so it is. So it is. Yes, thank you so very much. And uh, there are those of you who haven't opened your egg because you don't want to spill jelly jelly beans in in an envelope. And when you get home, you might want to. There's a, a a small little note in there and something to remind you of. So and this is our our gift to you. Things to remind you of. Okay. Now, we have books in the back that are free, or you can for a donation if you want. Uh, we have food here that has been offered by... Gabrielle, could you come up just a minute? We have people here who have never seen your smiling face and don't know who they are. Yay, Gabrielle! Gabrielle is in charge of this space, and this is when we were looking for a space, she offered us this space. Yay! Happy Queer Easter! <laughs> well, everyone is welcome, you know, allies, queer people, anyone that loves being here. So that's the real thing. Yay! Um, so we get donations for older adults and I call them when I get the order and then the rest of it I give to you because there's one or two older adults here. Yeah. And so it, it makes it okay. And um, the other thing I want to tell you at 12.30 there will be some people at the back table who will give you envelopes so you can mail out your um, expired medications over the counter and prescription, not anything else. <coughs> I've been outside with all the fluffy stuff. <laughs> so anyway, um, they will be here soon. <coughs> I don't think they're going to take your medications. They'll give you the envelope so you can mail it. Yeah. And um, the other thing is, please come to Rainbow Bingo. <laughs> Who already goes? Yay! We've got people here. And um, we're going to celebrate Earth Day as well as National Jelly Bean Day and you all <coughs> already have jelly beans. Anyway, we love having you here and have the crops over. Yeah. So thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Gabrielle. Thank you, Gabrielle. So we have coffee in the back. We have food for you to pick up. We have books for you to look at. And most of all, we have delightful people to talk to. So please stick around. I want to say that Chanel is making the coffee. Oh, we have Lonnie is making the coffee. Yay, Lonnie, thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. So glad to have you. I wish I didn't say pro. Oh, and I know. Eileen, if you're watching, we wish you a safe trip. Bye.